So this is a uh, Zerodium, and you can see right down there at the bottom, it sticks out real fast, up to 2.5 million US dollars per submission. So as you scroll down, there's a couple different primary categories. There's the desktop and servers category, and then there's the mobile category down here. Under mobile, you can see up to 2.5 million US dollars for an Android full chain persistent zero click exploit. What that means is if I find a vulnerability in, let's say, an SMS app where I can send you a text and you don't even have to do it, you don't have to click on a phishing link or anything. I just send you something and it roots your phone and gives me remote access to it. That's what they're talking about here. And that's if like you Pegasus, go down, right? Yes, exactly, like Pegasus. If you go down a notch here, speaking of Pegasus, that's iOS. So there's up to $2 million. I remember one time when I believe it was Zerodium, they used to be called Vupin, I believe it's the same company, um, that they said we're no longer or we're temporarily not accepting Apple iOS zero days because they had enough of them. That's crazy. And then they opened it back up again because now it's even harder to weaponize and find those. It's not just one exploit anymore. It's like three, four, or even more exploits chained together to get you that remote code execution. And then you see other big apps, like WhatsApp is huge, right? iMessage, Telegram, Signal's a big one. There's also bounties for things like Tor nodes and um, browsers like Tor, the Tor browser, or de-anonymization of Tor nodes on the darknet. Here's the desktop and server one. So up to a million US dollars for a Windows remote code execution zero click. Chrome, oh. Apache. So up to a half a million dollars for a remote code execution with local privilege escalation against Chrome on Windows. Those are some significant payments. But that goes back to my point, which is who are you selling it to? Who are the customers of Zerodium in this case? So as you work your way out and the price tags get higher, you can imagine who the types of buyers are. Now with regard to um, just stories, I guess more like I'll say a couple examples where I've been hit up on Twitter, DMs, people have gotten my signal info somehow and sent me a message that obviously I, I didn't give this number out to anyone in particular. And um, they hit you up and say something like, one crazy example is we are looking for someone who is not someone who has government secret you know, clearance or anything, who is willing and interested in going to another country. I won't name the country, but I'll say it's one of the countries who are very loose on hacking laws, bypassing passport control. So bypassing customs, they will get you in and you'll be there for about 48 hours and they'll get you back out. And it's kind of one of those things where when I've talked to people who work in intelligence divisions and such or military, and I asked them about that particular type of uh, request, I like, what happens if you get caught? Like, what if you're over there, you bypass customs and you, they're like, they probably don't, they don't know who you are. They don't, not, no one's going to come rescue you in a helicopter. Another one where it was all about going onto container ships and backdooring firmware to kind of affect the supply chain of things because routers and switches and such, those are in aggregate points and ISPs and other organizations where you now have access to some significant amount of traffic or people who request that you meet them at a coffee shop. So that's one thing I'd recommend. If you're someone who has a vulnerability that you think is worth money and people aren't gonna pay for stuff like some random FTP client or server, it's gotta be the, the things that you saw on that Zerodium site, that's the kind of apps yeah. people will buy uh, exploits for. Don't ever send them the exploit or the trigger unless you've been paid, don't ever meet them somewhere out at like a coffee shop. The best way to do it, there are ways to do it if you're actually gonna go that path. And again, I'm not advocating that you should do this, but I know people will go and do it. And you wanna be smart, you wanna be safe. You wanna make sure you're going through VPN, going through uh, the Tor network and using some way of uh, anonymous screen sharing where you're able to demonstrate to the interested party, this actually works. Because they're gonna quickly say, especially if they think they can pull a fast one, they're gonna send it to us. Just send us the trigger code, don't weaponize it. Just send us like, you have to prove it to us. We'll pay you and, and you're not gonna get paid if you do it. It's best to go with ethical buyers. And uh, yeah, I'm more than happy. Like if you ever, my Twitter DMs are open. And if you run into a situation where you have a, an exploit and you're just curious about who might be interested in buying that or, or if it's something someone might want to buy, you totally hit me up. Now, I'm not going to give recommendations on who you should sell it to or uh, especially if you're going the more unethical route, but I'm happy to like at least 
help you not make poor choices. I think it's, imp- I always want to highlight, you know, do the do the right thing, the ethical thing, because that's that story of your friend or the guy that you mentioned, um, you know, I don't want to live the rest of my life worrying that I could walk down an alley and ne- not come back again. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, I, you know, as we're growing up, like I look back at the 90s and I definitely did things that were questionable as far as like, dialing up a, a modem, a phone number, or without permission, launching an exploit against some random computer. But th- that's long in my past. And I look back at that, I'm like, that was really dumb. And I would never advise doing that. I've always been very, very ethical. And uh, it's it's the smart choice. Because like you said, you want to keep you and your family safe. Yeah, ex- exactly. Especially if you've got kids, you know, and you're married or you know, you've got someone that you care about. You, um, you know, when, you, when you're young and dumb, I like to say when, when, you know, when you and I were young and dumb, you know, and single or whatever, you you might be like more inclined to do things that are more risky. But it, it the problem with that kind of stuff is once you once you overstep, it can always come back and bite you. So yeah, I'm I'm glad that you you're highlighting some of the problems um, and do it ethically. And thanks so much for sharing. So I'll put Stephen's um, links below so that you can follow him on Twitter. I suggest you do that. Go to go and subscribe to his YouTube channel. But um, also, you know, send him a DM and please don't send him a bunch of dumb questions. But, you know, if, if, you, if you've got something that you think is serious, then, you know, talk to him about it. So, Stephen, I really want to thank you, you know, for, for um, sharing that.